What's up Cybernix and welcome back to a new quick win. Today I'm going to show you how to send a pre-filled email with Ionix. So we're going to create an application where the user can capture an image and then we're going to open the native email client with all the information filled out for the user to subject, body and attachments using Ionic Angular and Capacitor. We're actually not using a directly a Capacitor plugin because the one I tried didn't include attachments at the time trying it out. So instead we're going to fall back to the Cordova plugin, which is pretty good for creating emails like this and integrated with Capacitor, which is actually not that easy and not very well documented. So I'm going to show you how to make that work inside your Ionic application. Full uh, source code, link below the video for all Ionic Academy members. And if you're not yet a member, go check it out, ionicacademy.com, my place for uh, learning basically everything Ionic. But for now, let's dive into the video and create a cool email sending client with Ionic. All right, we can get started with our application by first of all installing the Cordova plugin. Yes, we're going to use the Cordova plugin, Cordova plugin email composer. It's really one of the best uh, plugins for uh, creating a predefined email. And to better use it with Ionic, we're also going to install the awesome Cordova plugins package email composer. This was previously at Ionic native, so it just looked like this in the past and Ionic Native changed names uh, a few months ago to became this other package, which is more obvious uh, what uh, the whole thing is about. And also we need the core uh, from Ionic Native, now awesome Cordova plugins. If you also want to capture images, go ahead and simply install the Capacitor camera because we can easily use Capacitor plugins alongside Cordova plugins. And once you got all of this installed, uh, you can run the first Ionic build and at your native platforms. Now, to use the uh, plugin and the camera, we need to apply a few changes to our project. So first of all, um, using the <laughs> good old uh, plugin right here, the email uh, composer, uh, we haven't done this in a long time, but what you need to do if you want to use Ionic Native, now uh, awesome Cordova plugins is First of all, import the plugin with ngx if you're using Angular inside your app module and then add the plugin to the array of providers just like this. Then it will be available for our application. Now, um, for both the plugin and as well for the uh, camera, we need now a few settings. Uh, let's first of all talk about um, well, let's talk about the plugin actually, because that's quite interesting. Um, you don't really find any information about that besides the installation right here uh, and how to use it. But the problem is this plugin usually does some magic within uh, your Cordova config XML to both iOS and Android. And what it does is it adds this LS application queries schemes. Uh, now we're talking about iOS. So we now need to put this into our iOS plist if we're using Capacitor because we don't have a config XML and those changes won't be applied automatically. So go to your info plist, which is usually an iOS app app info plist. And then towards the bottom, uh, we can enter first of all this one. Uh, no, this is not just this, the key LS application query schemes and then mail to. Also, because we're using the uh, Pesita camera, we need these three permissions for the camera usage for the library. Uh, you've done this most likely before if you use the camera, but that's not related to the email. I just wanted to add the camera so we can attach images because I know that's uh, usually a common thing. Okay, so once we've done this, the part of the application query scheme for Android, we can also scroll down and take a look at the changes this plugin usually does to Android to the config file. And what it does is it adds this uh, intent to manifest queries. And I, well, I wasn't smart enough to figure this out and looking at this earlier. So that's why I tell you uh, where I found this information. Now we go to our Android manifest file, which is under uh, your Android app source main Android manifest. And then you put in this block queries intent 
And this, uh, I think, defines how the send to intent opens a different application uh, if we use mail to something like this. Um, and put it under manifest. Don't put it into application activity or call it an intent filter. I gave all of that a try for about two hours. It didn't work uh, until I found that it just looks like this. Okay, so this is what the uh, magic here automatically does. I don't know if does it actually anything else. No, we don't need this. Android X enabled. Do we actually have Android X enabled in here? I don't know, but no, we don't need to as far as I know. Um, and we don't need this. Uh, and as far as I know, we don't need anything of the rest. The only thing we now also need is to add two more permissions. This is now once again talking about the capacitor camera to read the external and write external storage. So those are the changes. The two changes here to the Android manifest and within the info peer list, we got also two changes for the email part and for the camera part. And once you're done with this, everything else is really just a pretty easy usage of the plugin. I'm going to import it like this once again now in my home page and I'm going to inject it into the uh, constructor here, email composer, email composer. Now, I prepared a few changes to the HTML. Basically, I added three buttons. So we can, first of all, check if we have an account on the device to actually send an email. Then we're gonna add a button to capture an image and finally to open an email. Um, also, here's just a card displaying the currently captured image, but that's not really uh, something fancy. So let's go ahead with our uh, check account functionality. Um, actually used this with a flag before. So uh, has count, I've set this to false and then you could uh, do it in here, ng if uh, only allow open email if we actually have an account. The problem is I found some issues with this on Android so it didn't work completely for me. Um, anyway, um, most likely you're gonna do it in the background but still might check for the account. So you're gonna have to perhaps try a bit around with this. Maybe it's also just because I rarely use my Android device and therefore the account wasn't correctly set up. In the end, everything worked fine, but uh, has account sometimes also still uh, returned a wrong value. Okay, so to check uh, if we have an account, we can use the email composer and use has account. We can also use has client. Um, we don't really need has permission in fact. Um, so this will, otherwise it will reject. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, anyway, this is just more of an information thing for you. Now to capture an image, uh, I'm just gonna use the usual block I use for capturing an image and then bring in the imports uh, from capacitor camera. So that's really the default setup. Uh, get the photo, quality, allow editing, result type, I'm gonna set it to base64, although you could also uh, use a file URI and pass that later to the email. I'm gonna show you uh, the place where you would insert that. And then I'm gonna use the camera for now, but you could also use photos or prompt. Also, again, imports now coming from at capacitor camera. Uh, this is new with capacitor three. So once we got this, um, we got back a base64 string and to actually display it, we're gonna append this meter information before the base64 string. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is uh, with this string in place, we can't uh, pass that information to the email attachment. The email attachment uh, looks a bit different, <laughs> uh, at least as far as I know. So we're gonna uh, keep track of the real pure base64 string here as well. And now the magic for open email comes. And uh, we can first of all define the email using the email composer options. So you can check out that object. It contains all the information. You can even specify an app to use. Uh, I think, uh, will this work on iOS as well? Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it can actually work. So if you have different clients, uh, you can check this with get clients and you could use a specific client. Of course, all the two CC, attachment, subject body. Um, so the rest is pretty standard. Um, I've created a little email object that looks now like this. So we got two CC, uh, we got attachments, as you can see. The string now looks like this with double. Uh, that looks kind of strange, but perhaps that's the syntax from 
uh, the plugin. Let's quickly check. We can actually see from the examples here. Um, yeah, I think it should look exactly like this. Um, quick note that actually if you encounter package Android support, V4 content does not exist. You might have to use this fix for Android, but I haven't seen this. So I think this was only in an uh, old world. Okay, um, that means we got the image, we got the subject, we got a body. Uh, and now the only thing you need to do is call this dot email composer open and pass in our email options. And that's really pretty much it. Once again, you could specify an app in here to use, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it like this for iOS. Then you can uh, run your application and build it for whatever platform you enjoy the most. Uh, iOS, Android really should work on both platforms. I gave it a try. On Android, again, it was a bit more complicated, but it worked. Uh, on iOS, it pretty much worked out of the box. Just make sure you got the plist stuff uh, in place. So then let's give it a try. Let's capture an image. Oh, I love this image section. Use photo. It is displayed. Um, I still had the logic to first check for an account and then open the email. And it opens the email from to CC. We got a subject, uh, we got an image. So everything works just as expected. And you're gonna hopefully see the same on Android. If you don't see it, first of all, make sure you got the right changes inside your Android manifest. Um, if you got problems with the image, of course, check the path and the information of the image. And otherwise check if you have an email client configured. There are more functions here on the email composer that you can check out uh, like has account, has client, or just get clients. So try to debug around that to get if the user has installed clients or accounts, because usually I guess that's the problem of not opening an email, because otherwise this is really straightforward and should hopefully work on all of your devices. All right, and that's it for today. I was actually kind of shocked <laughs> that there's not really a good uh, or great capacitor native plugin for sending emails. And we really have to rely on the Cordova plugin because it's always like, yeah, it works, we can grow, use it, but really I had a lot of problems figuring out uh, this config XML stuff that we now need to do manually with Capacitor because it wasn't documented. And of course, the creator of the Cordova plugin doesn't have to document anything about Capacitor. It's actually cool that we can even use that plugin, but um, it doesn't matter for them. So anyway, uh, the plugin for Capacitor looks promising. I'm pretty sure uh, Einfach Hans will include attachments and perhaps even more in the future, or you could also fork that repository and I'm pretty sure uh, it should be possible to easily add the missing functionality to that plugin. So in the end, we might have a cool native Capacitor plugin that just works without all the Cordova stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you get notified about all the other upcoming tutorials in the future. Go check out the Ionic Academy and I will hopefully catch you next week like always. So, happy coding, Simon.